Hey, it's Ben here, and here in this video, we're going to have a look at how we manually change RGB colors in Final Cut Pro 10. Now, before we get started, we're just going to reset the window layout here. So I'm going to come up to Window, Workspaces, and we're just going to reset to the default workspace. It means we're all looking at the same layout of Final Cut Pro. So now we're going to come up to our Type and Generators up at the top left, and we're just going to grab a basic title. So we'll come to the Bumper and Opener and scroll up, and we'll grab the basic title from here. Drag this down to our Timeline and you can see in the middle here we have our white type. I'll just get this to fit the window here. So now we want to look at how we change the color and then also how we manually kind of type in RGB values um, to modify that color. So up in our type we're on the T but we don't see anything. These are published parameters that you'll get for some generators. We're going to come to our type elements here which shows us the type presets. So if we drop down this menu we can choose for instance say a bold 2D style. We'll type in color in here and then we'll just increase the size. So move this around. Now when you're moving things around sometimes you might notice that that move option is not there. Now I've just flicked on the transform controls down here and if you've got these transform options you can move your type around but actually it's also moving around the whole kind of frame too. So normally when you're repositioning your type, you just want to have this toggled off. So the blue little transform option there, and that means you can move the type independently of the overall layout. So now we're going to come down and scroll all the way down here. Now when you're looking at these basic options, you may not see all these details here. You might just see this kind of list of basic face, outline, glow, etc. And it's down on the face where we're going to see the color option. And this is where for this type we're going to type in these RGB values. Now normally when you drop down this panel um, you see colors that you can pick out. So we can pick out any color and we can see the RGB values that we've got there but it's kind of hard to get a specific set of values in here. So for instance if we're going for a particular blue or yellow or orange then we can kind of grab it. We can't type in those specific values. So where we do that um, is by clicking on the color box here and that will bring up this pop-up window. So here we can see uh, the same style of color picker where we can change the color. We also have these other options up at the top so we can change the sliders which is where we change the RGB values. So here we can type in specific values. So um, we have our red so if we type in 100 for red, 100 for green and then 0 for blue we're going to get this kind of forest green. So we can type in values here so you can match the RGB colors to fit with your brand or colors that you're using for a particular project. So here we can see a little zoom in of that box when we're modifying the red, blue and green values and how we can mix those different colors in that box. So let's just uh, push this up. So we'll type in 200 for this and we're going to get this kind of nice orange. We've got 200, 100 and if we wanted to save this orange um, to use in other areas then we can drag this into this list of swatches. So we've saved that orange there. Now if we've got other type generators or generators that we're using in our designs then we can also use these colors in different areas too. So for instance if I come down to my premium VFX simple infographics here when I drag this down to the timeline so this infographics 12 then we'll just stretch this out a little bit you can see I've got this uh, kind of yellow color in here in fact let's just drop the opacity of this down a bit so we can see our graph okay so we've got our infographic here and we've got this kind of yellow flash of color on our type for United States here and uh, this part of our graph which we can nicely kind of modify. You can see the percentages there for this simple infographics change really nicely. So for this yellow we will come away from our basic text options to our type generators and we'll scroll down and you can see we've got these different color options. Now basically if I click on this color one then I can choose that orange that I saved before from my previous type box and I can have that color consistency between different graphics that I'm now using by using the RGB sliders typing in those values and then also using these swatches down at the bottom. So if I want to delete these swatches down here once I've added them I can just click once on them, left click and then hit delete and it will delete those. 
So we'll just re-add this. So you can see now we get that nice color consistency. And again, we can use this in lots of different areas. So I've got this effect here using some masking and the outline tool uh, from BrettFX. And basically in here, we can highlight this. We can come into this PT outline, which is part of Brett's Power Tools, and click on the box here. And then we can change this. Now, one nice thing we can do once we get into these sliders as well, is we can change this to hue, saturation, and brightness. So if we want different variations of this same color, we can select the HSB sliders and we can increase the saturation. So we might have a brighter orange. Now it's still the same color, uh, hue, um, but it's just a slightly brighter version of that. Or we could lighten it up. So basically you can see these three oranges that I've created are the same hue. We just have a light version, a bright version, and a dark version of those. So we can make those by flipping between the RGB sliders and the HSB sliders, which is super useful to be able to have control over that color. So for instance, you might want to add from your generators, if we come all the way down to the bottom here, a solid, we could add a solid custom color that we could then have as this darker color. And then when we place some type over the top here. So we'll just come back to our bumper and opener and our basic title. So now with this, we can match that orange. We'll just come up to our type options here. We'll change this to one of my presets that I've created, make this nice and big. And then if we come down to the face, the color options here, we can click on that color box and we'll select that lighter version of that same color. So you see we get that nice level of color consistency between those three different colors. And one last thing to mention here is that we also have a color picker within our colors panel here. So we have the RGB sliders, we have the hue, saturation, and brightness sliders. If we come down to our swatches here, you can see we've got this little eyedropper, which allows us to click on it and then select color from anywhere on the screen. So from different applications, from Final Cut Pro or anything in the Final Cut Pro interface, we can kind of select colors that we want. So you can see as I hover over these different colors, the purple, uh, the colors in this video, or if I move the playhead to a different spot, I can pick colors out um, from the, the video as well. So this video doesn't have a lot of saturation. So if we just grab a different video here, so you can see now when I select that color pick here, I can pick out any of the different reds or grays or greens uh, from this image. So it's nice and zoomed in, enables me to select a specific color that I want uh, for my type. So I can select that and then, oops, so I can, I can select that, but actually let's make sure we've got our type color selected first. So we'll select our type. And then if we scroll down, come to show the face, and this is another important point. You always have to click once here on this color box before you can use these tools in the colors window. So um, we'll just actually bring the playhead back here and then click on this once more. We can grab the color picker and then we can grab a nice green from here and that will now be our type. So we can pick any color from the screen um, using this colors window and then also save those colors as swatches too. So that's how to change colors manually in Final Cut Pro 10. Also how to save them if you want to keep color consistency across this project and different projects. This little colors panel that you see here in Final Cut Pro 10 is a Mac system color panel. So when you open things up in Keynote or in other applications like text edit, then you'll also see this uh, kind of list of color swatches there as well. So it's super useful across all those different applications including things like motion. Um, so you can keep that kind of color consistency and get your branding just right. So hopefully this is useful. If you have any questions about Final Cut Pro 10 then please do leave them in the comments below otherwise I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.